Hi guys, welcome to One UX One. Today we're talking about how do you become a UXR, a user experience researcher. Now the first thing I want to clarify here is the most common question, do you need a degree, a master's or a bachelor's to become a user experience researcher, a UXR? You do not need a degree to become a user experience researcher or even a UX designer. You do not need a degree. Yes, it may help in some jobs for some employers, but in my experience, 99% of employers don't really care if you've got a degree or not. What they want to know is, do you have the experience? Do you have the skill set? Do you have the portfolio to get the job? That's the most important thing that they're worried about, is can this person deliver on the task? Can they produce those designs? Can they do the research to find the pain points, the friction, the problems that users are facing? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, what skill set do you need to become a user experience researcher? Now, a lot of employers will say in the job description, if you look online, they'll say, ideally would like someone, and this is not essential, this is desirable requirements. They would like somebody who has a background in psychology or marketing or statistics or something similar to that. Now, that's also, again, it's desirable, but what I'd say is what's really important, what they're really looking for is somebody with soft skills or what we call people skills. Have you got experience of front-facing jobs with general public? Do you have experience of working in teams, delivering workshops, presentations, and dealing with stakeholders in the organization? These are the skill sets that are really needed to become a UXR. The other thing they're looking for is proof and evidence of that. So don't hesitate if you don't have the exact criteria. And the good news is there's such a shortage of user experience researchers that a lot of companies are willing to hire the right person, even if you don't have the right amount of experience. And that's because there is a great need now for data. As you know, since COVID, more and more organizations want the right rich data on their users. And that need is going to increase over time. Why do we need that and why, how do we know that? As more and more companies are growing their online presence, they need to know and get those insights. How long are people staying on our website? How long are they spending on doing a transaction, i.e. checking out? Is there a high drop-off rate? Are they dropping off without completing the transaction or the purchase? How often do they visit our website? What browsers are they using? Are they using it on their mobile? So that we can design better for the mobile, i.e. responsive design or adaptive design. Are they viewing our website or using it on a tablet? Or are they mainly desktop based? And what happens is when we do the research, we realize things like some applications, some software, it can be 99% desktop based. And others, it could be 99%, 90%, 95% mobile-based. So if we don't have those insights, we can't really deliver for our users. Now, how do you actually get the experience you need to become a UXR? Now, if you haven't got any background in user experience research, what you can do is you can offer companies and organizations through online contacts on LinkedIn, email, or friends and family, anyone who works in a different company, or someone who owns a small business, and you can offer them something really valuable to them. So instead of asking them for a favor, you know, I want to become a user experience researcher, could you let me work for you? Can I, can I get my work experience with you? It's, it's really something, it's not very attractive to an employer, but if you say, I will gather insights into your business, find out what the pain points are for your company or your organization. And that discovery, I will present a report to you on where you can improve your website, your app, or your service. That's a good sell to an organization. I don't think any organization will refuse an offer like that. So if you can offer your services for free, it's a twofold benefit. The organization gets the data that they need, which would have cost them thousands of pounds or dollars and you get something for your portfolio, you get something for your resume or CV. So it works both ways for both parties here, yourself 
and the organization. Now to get that experience, how are you going to deliver that? How are you going to do it? So there's lots of free applications now you can use. You can even use, and I'll say this is the most basic form, you can use Google Forms or Typeform to create the questionnaire that you want to use with the users. And that's good enough for user research until you have access or and you want to avoid paying for these applications and apps like user zoom usability and so many other like user voice some of them cost and some of them have free trials maybe you could use a free trial but what you want to do is get the research get the data for them over a period of time now how many people are you going to interview that depends on yourself you can interview one person five to six is the recommended number over five or six you tend to get similar results coming back. So any more than that is usually not beneficial, but if you have the time, you can interview more, more people. So you can start with a Google form and have a simple questionnaire and look online. There's many templates of uh, user research interviews and surveys. And if you do have the ability and the opportunity, you can do, run a focus group. Now that's a bit harder because you'll need somebody with you to take notes because if you're interviewing you won't be able to take notes which brings me on to the next thing when you're carrying out the research nowadays with the remote abilities of zoom and teams and other applications you could ask for their permission to record the session that way you don't you're not note taking and asking questions at the same time and don't forget to download my free uxr guide which is below the link below and you'll get a guide on what are the essentials of user research experience and user research the attributes the qualities that you need and the components of the whole process that's all in the download so don't forget to get the download for free guys now the next thing i want to talk about is once you've started to gather that data you need to know how to write a report now you can keep that really really simple in the beginning so i'd use powerpoint or keynote to create that presentation because that's really what will will suffice you don't need to worry about really fancy uh, PDFs or designing them with Canva or graphic designing keep it really simple with what are the objectives of the research what was the hypothesis i.e. what were you trying to second guess what is the problem you're trying to solve for example the hypothesis could be something like the users will be taking more than a minute to check out of the uh, the checkout process. Now that could be a hypothesis. Now you need to prove it or disprove it, and that's your basis of what you're trying to discover. Then you set up your questionnaire. You've done your research, and then you write up the findings. And in the findings, you're going to make recommendations, and you're going to make two other sections defects and enhancements you're going to look for defects i what were the problems in the website the app or the software those defects you're going to write them up you could put them in a form or a column and then the enhancements the improvements to the website or service that you're going to suggest because all of that is useful to the company to give to the developer to improve the service improve the website improve the application so your findings will actually add value and solve user problems in the real world now when you put that in your resume when you put that in your portfolio that's one solid case study that you've done in the real world and that will help you get your first job so this is really why it's so important to get active and really contact organizations and be proactive in and show your enthusiasm because to get any career, you have to want it. You have to be hungry for it. You have to desire it. That's half the job done. So once you've desired it, you have the determination. That's half of your task, i.e. that drive needs to be there. Without the drive, you won't be able to deliver on, on your own dream of becoming a user researcher or becoming a user experience designer. So either one, you need to be really driven to do that. If you want to know more, don't forget to subscribe and share with others and watch the whole series so I can help you get to your goal of becoming a UXR or a UX user designer. I hope you enjoyed this video, share it and like and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you guys.